Listen up, your Apple Watch might be doing more than tracking your health. It could be exposing you to toxic forever chemicals every single day. A shocking new study just revealed that Apple Watch bands along with Fitbit, Garmin and other major brands contain PFAS chemicals, the same chemicals that are linked to cancer, hormone disruption and immune function. And here's the real question. Are these chemicals actually absorbing into your skin? Are we unknowingly poisoning ourselves just by wearing a fitness tracker? Well, today we're going to dive deep into the research, what they found, how it affects your health and which brands you should avoid. You don't want to miss this one. Let's get into this knowledge bomb for Heal Thyself. All right, everyone, welcome to, to the episode about sports watches, these fitness trackers. This is the Knowledge Bomb segment, and I, I wanted to really address this because it was a hot report that came out, uh, and it was based on a study, and I, I really want to clear this up. I want to dive deep into, is it actually concerning this wearable technology? Do the bands expose us to these PFAS or per and polyfluoral alkyl substances? You heard of PFAS before, Teflon. You heard about it in outer rainwear. You hear about it in yoga pants. You hear about it getting into the water. It's a nasty chemical. That we can't deny across the board. And they found it in smartwatches, these fitness trackers. But I really want to explore the recent study and, and understand the implications about this PFAS exposure. Is it actually getting into our bodies? And if you have a smartwatch, is it time to get a new band? So when it comes to PFAS, the per and polyfluoral alka substances, they are a large group of man-made chemicals. And they're characterized by their resistance to water, oil, and heat. That's why we see them in frying pans. And their resistance has actually led to their widespread use. It's across the board in so many industries. We see them in the nonstick cookware, the stain-resistant fabrics, wrinkle-proof fabrics, waterproof clothing, food packaging, firefighting foams, big one, that pink foam that they spray full of PFAS. Cosmetics, for sure. How do you think you have those no smear water resistant lipsticks or cosmetics? It's PFAS. And there's a real environmental and health concern because they are really strongly bonded chemicals. They do not break down easily in the environment. That's why they have the name Forever Chemicals. They accumulate in the water, the soil, in living organisms, including us up to 10 plus years. And exposure to these chemicals has been linked to many health issues. And this is really important for us to understand. It's not just about Apple Watches. It's always about understanding this chemical, where it is and how to avoid it. Cancer, liver damage, immune disruption, endocrine or hormonal disruption, and how many people are actually suffering with any of the aforementioned diseases and their doctor has never even thought about the word PFAS. Because it's very well likely that the overarching chemical burden that might be heavy on PFAS in your body could be leading to a disease. Maybe it's not the diet. Maybe it has everything to do with your exposures. And it's a big thing we're talking about now in medicine. So PFAS were found in smartwatches and these fitness tracker bands. So the study conducted by researchers at the University of Notre Dame, they really wanted to investigate PFAS in wearable devices, specifically those smartwatches. So in this study, the researchers tested 22 wristbands from various brands at various price points, right, including new and used ones too. And bands made from different materials were selected as containing this material called fluoroelastomers. Now this is important for later. You ever see the fitness trackers or the smartwatches? You know that like rubbery bracelet that it has that you can kind of like pull it apart and it goes back. It's kind of like a thick rubber band, but it's nice and matted. It's known for its durability, but it's also resistant key point to sweat and oils. These are smart watches, fitness trackers, resistant to sweat and oils. So it's not going to degrade, right? So this is, it's the, it's literally the perfect design for runners out there, people working out, people just going on walks and want to track something in the sun in the middle of the summer. So they had their analyzation techniques. 
They did the study and what did they find? What did they find with these trackers and these watches? Well, they found the prevalence of PFAS out of 22 bands tested, 15 contained significant levels of fluorine. That's indicating the presence of this chemical PFAS. And the level of these chemicals were actually significant. You know how I'm passionate about creating a healthy home, a healthy environment, and that extends to my cookware. One of my first ever shows on Heal Thyself was about cookware. And it's why I'm super excited to tell you about our place. They have enameled cast iron line and someone who's really careful about what goes into my food. I did my research. I found really good quality, sexy looking pans and they impressed me, right? Unlike traditional cast iron pans, they can rust. You know that if you have one, it needs constant maintenance. And these pans have an amazing enamel coating that is practically indestructible. It's long lasting, indestructible, and also meets the strictest food safety standards. We're talking about zero concerns for lead, cadmium, and other heavy metals, which is the most important thing in my cookware period. So what I love most is how they've actually managed to keep all the benefits of cast iron cooking, right? The perfect sear, even heat distribution, and, and they make it so much more convenient for everyday use, right? You don't need any seasoning required. It's super easy to clean. It's never gonna rust. This is how you upgrade your kitchen. Go to fromourplace.com and enter the code DRG at checkout to get 10% off the whole site. Anything you want. And here's the best part. They offer a 100-day trial with free shipping and returns. That is fromourplace.com and the code is DRG. If you love the podcast and you want to be down with the Dr. G Health community, we give incredible tips every single week on getting a healthier physical, mental, and emotional body the newest updates of my favorite products, the newest updates of my favorite practices. Stay in the loop by joining the Dr. G community. All you gotta do is go to any one of my posts on Instagram and comment the word news. You'll get a DM to join. Something interesting that was found in this study was that there was a price correlation. Surprisingly, the more expensive bands, priced above $30, were more likely to contain elevated PFAS levels compared to those less costly counterparts. And in this study, they didn't disclose specific brand names, but they definitely studied the big ones, the Apple, the Nike, Fitbit, and Google. And we know that those brands openly advertise their use of floral elastomers, so we can already deduce that those were most likely some of the products that were containing these PFAS chemicals. Now, the big question is, if you're exposed to these sports trackers or smartwatches, is it actually getting into the skin? So we want to know about dermal absorption. Is there a pathway? So the human skin is amazing. It has multiple layers and the outermost layer is a layer that acts like a barrier. It doesn't allow the passage of many things, including certain chemicals. Now PFAS is a compound that has the ability to penetrate the skin unfortunately, especially the short chain ones that were found in this study. Those tend to be more water soluble and have a higher propensity for getting into the skin, especially when the skin is damaged or when the skin is hot and it's sweaty. Big issue. And really exposure of the duration matters. Now, a lot of people don't just wear their sports trackers and their smartwatches just when they go on a run and then take it off and they're done for the day. I see people wear it in the office. I see people at the supermarket. I see people on meetings. They have it on. Yoga class, right? They The prolonged exposure to the watch is the problem, especially when there's sweat and oils that are acting as carriers, facilitating the movement of these chemicals in the skin. And unfortunately, we see that in the research that yes, PFAS can go into the skin, especially the smaller ones, through sweat, oil, damaged skin. A study in the Regulatory Toxicology and Pharmacology Review in 2024, just last year, evaluated existing studies on dermal absorption and the movement of these chemicals into the human skin. And the review had these findings. It highlighted significant variability in the absorption rates. But some studies in this review found that the longer chain PFAS chemicals have an absorption rate of about 5 to 10%. Whereas the shorter chain ones have an absorption rate of about like 60%. And the researchers of this review, they actually concluded that dermal absorption may be lower than ingesting PFAS or drinking the PFAS, right? But prolonged exposure will still contribute to the bioaccumulation of PFAS. 
and people are not taking off their watches. So should we be concerned about these PFAS in smartwatches, right? What's the key takeaway? We know, as per the study, they're present in many smartwatch bands, especially if they're made of fluoroelastomer. So if you're listening, go on the website, look up your sports tracker or your smartwatch and see if the band is made out of fluoroelastomers. For Apple, it will be. For Nike, it will be. For Fitbit, it will be. For Google, it will be, right? But sweat and prolonged skin contact may facilitate PFAS transfers from that band to the skin. And PFAS absorption through the skin is absolutely possible and may contribute to your body's overall toxic load. We want to keep that load low. We want to detoxify. We want our body's own detoxification mechanisms to get rid of that toxic load not faster than that load is accumulating. And unfortunately, when it comes to these bands, they have those shorter chain PFAS, which have been shown by that research study, the analysis, to have about 60% absorption into the skin versus those longer chain ones. So we know sweating, heat, just wearing them all day can actually expose you to the absorption of these PFAS into the skin. And it's the cumulative exposure, right? For days, months, years, that's when it really starts building up. And then naturally, are there then any watches that are PFAS free? So the University of Notre Dame study actually focused on identifying PFAS, but it didn't really list the brands of those that were chemical free. But I'm going to suggest this right now. If you have a watch and you know they're made of that floral elastomers, it's time to change that. You don't have to change the face of the watch. You don't have to change the electronics, you know, exposure to Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, it's a whole nother podcast, but right now, get a new band, get a new band. Even if you've been wearing it for a while, get a new band. You can get one made of canvas or leather or fiber or whatever it needs to be. It's better that you buy multiple of those and change them multiple times a year versus the one that's going to be moisture wicking, right? So if you're going on your runs and your band is getting sweaty, that's a lot better than wearing the sweat resistant bands. Now, silicone based bands are not entirely risk free, but they had lower levels of PFAS compared to the floral elastomer bands. No good. And look, I'm not aware of any brands that actually emphasize these non toxic materials. Like tech and non toxic haven't been married yet. Maybe there is a company out there, but if they do have a non toxic wristband, Ask the company about it. What's non-toxic? Ask them, do they have PFAS? Ask them, can they prove that? Right? Because if you really enjoy wearing these, and you should enjoy wearing these, you shouldn't be doing it at the risk of your own health. So what can you do to reduce your exposure? Check the materials. Avoid any bands made of those floral elastomers to summarize, right? Apple, Watch, Fitbit, other major brands. Go for silicone, fabric, leather, anything that's really going to be more benign when it comes to exposing to your skin. And if you really love those floral elastomer bands and, and you can't do anything without it, then just rotate it. Like take that one off and put in your exercise one that is safe because you know when you're sweating and getting that body going, the heat and the, and the sweat is dripping down into the band, that those are carriers and the oils are carriers to bring those PFAS into your skin. Wash your bands regularly, especially if you are sweating onto one because we know that it can leach out harsh chemicals. And look, we're just at the brink of this, right? More studies are emerging on PFAS-free alternatives and these wearable technologies, but you got what you need. Make the change in your life, make the big moves, and protect yourself, right? Protect yourself. Here's my final thought. Smartwatches, fitness trackers, they are designed to improve your health, and they have a net positive effect when it comes to your health. Unfortunately, some of the materials used could be compromising your long-term well-being. We're still looking into dermal research of PFAS, but the evidence out there is suggesting that not only do these smartwatches and fitness trackers contain this forever chemical that can disrupt every system in your body, but they get into your body through the skin. If you have one, consider switching to a non-toxic band. Fortunately, we shouldn't have to choose between fitness and health, but in today's day and age, we have to, and it is what it is. I hope you're empowered to make a decision better for you and your family. Thank you for joining this episode, this Knowledge Bomb. Thank you for rating, reviewing, and subscribing. I appreciate it. I love you. Thank you.